Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey, over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today we have a question from our friend TJ. TJ says, I was hoping if I could get some advice from you about groin protectors, you know, cups, jocks. My sparring is picked up in intensity. Okay, cool. And I've been asked to go get one. Ah, okay. Yeah, man. I'm constantly seeing people spar without a cup, and then they get accidentally groin kicked, and they start complaining about it. So, yeah, don't let that be you, my friend. You need groin protection. If you are going to spar, and you are a man, protect your groin. But he goes on to say, normally I wouldn't mind, but I keep hearing horror stories about cups not being properly fitted. And those are legitimate stories. Yeah. Not being properly fitted and secure, and a bad strike hitting at such an angle that the testicles get completely smashed. Yeah, that has happened. That does happen if you're not wearing it correctly. This is a major fear preventing me from wearing a cup. I was hoping if you could alleviate my fears, especially for someone like me who only has one testicle. The other one was removed a long time ago to prevent cancer. Man, TJ, sorry to hear about that. So, your concern is understandable. Anyway, thanks for your videos. Uh, any advice you could provide would be most appreciated. All right, I've got some advice for you, TJ. First of all, here in this hand is a plastic cup. Don't get one of these. These are garbage. When I started out, like most people, I got a plastic cup because they're cheap. And uh, th this is a similar thing. This is a plastic cup encased in a jock strap style thing that you can wear, slip it around your your waist. It's easy to put on, easy to take off. I used to wear these a lot because they were cheap and they were easy. Okay. But what ended up happening, that plastic cup inside is easy to break. I ended up shattering quite a few of these and I didn't think too much about it. I just thought I'll, I'll get another one until one day one of these sharp little shards that formed started poking me down there and I realized, oh, this is a terrible accident waiting to happen. I gotta make some changes. So when I was in Thailand, I bought this thing. It's a Thai steel cup, um, one of these no-name brands. The brand of the cup is not nearly as important as what it's made out of. So if, if you've got a metal one, this one is actually not steel, it's, it's aluminum or aluminium for British viewers out there. It says Muay Thai on it. Anyway, got that in, in Bangkok when I was there, or was it, um, I don't remember, traveled a, a bunch of places in Thailand, but anyway, the Thai Steel Cup changed my life, man. Now, generally they come with strings, and if you don't have the strings on the cup, get some shoelaces or some other sturdy strings, thick ones, that you can tie it on with, okay? So it's got these holes, you can strap it over a pair of compression shorts, and I, I recommend wear it over compression shorts, something that keeps your genitals in place. You don't want those flopping about and, and banging against the walls of a metal chamber during violent action, if you know what I mean. So you want to keep those in place. So a pair of stretchy spandex Lycra uh, compression shorts, huge investment for you okay it is the most functional fantastic fitness fabric ever so take advantage a lot of people complain about the tie steel cup because again tying on some strings um, is difficult some people find it uncomfortable because you you tie these strings between your butt you know around the around the hips and then between the butt and around your crotch and some people just find it hard to move when it's tied really tight and it should be really tight so especially for MMA in Muay Thai it's not as big of a deal because it's all stand-up fighting but as soon as you start rolling and contorting and moving your hips in different ways that you don't in Muay Thai but you do in Jiu Jitsu and wrestling then yeah one of these can start getting pretty uncomfortable so here's what I do for training. For fighting, I would recommend tie it on tight. Okay, and again, you know, compression shorts underneath. Okay, to keep everything in place. But 
If you look at this pair of compression shorts, and I got these bright green ones so they don't get lost in the background here, but these ones have a pocket on the inside, a pocket pocket right over the uh, right over the uh, the crotch there. Okay, and what you can do is take one of these cups and fit it inside of that pocket. Okay. And I would recommend get these as tight as you can wear them. Okay, as tight as you can wear them. Because if they're, if they're kind of loose or fitting, or just fitted but not tight, it, it won't be tight enough. Okay? So generally, this, this is what I do for practice for training. Because again, you don't have the, uh, the thing tied around through your butt and limiting mobility and being uncomfortable. But in addition to this, you know, the pair of um, compression shorts with the cup in it, I would recommend wear something really tight over that, such as a pair of uh, Ballet Tudo shorts. I don't know, I don't even know if they still sell this brand, the Jaco brand, but these, these are really good because it's, it's double fabric, double thickness, really, really tight. You know, some spandex is just really um, giving. You know, this, this keeps everything in place really, really well. So with the compression shorts and the cup underneath and the Vale Tudo shorts over the top, that stays in place really, really well. So I've taken uh, full contact strikes with that setup with, without a problem. But again, during a actual fight, I would recommend tie it on, tie it on. A lot of people might remember this video I did with Jordan Chow. He's gonna strike his way out of the arena and choke, ready? And go! You okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where we were testing out um, some of Master Wong's techniques, and I wanted to see how many groin strikes Jordan could land before I was able to finish a rear naked choke. And I was wearing a tie steel cup, let's see, I think, I think it was this one actually. That is that one. And these are full contact strikes Jordan is throwing right there. Now, this is not pretend. This is not going easy. This is full contact, just full on hammer blows. So yeah, this works really, really well. So for training, as opposed to tying on a, a tie steel cup multiple times a day because I do training sessions multiple times a day. And I even, I even wear a steel cup when I'm pad holding. Right, why, why would I wear a cup when holding pads? I'll tell you why, because people kick you in the groin all the time, even if you're not holding for kicks, man. Got to tell you this story. This has happened more than once. I'm holding pads for this girl. This, uh, she's been training a little while. And I'm holding up this focus mitt, you know, boxing focus mitt. Throw a jab right here, I say. Nice straight punch with your left hand. Straight punch with your left hand. And she just throws the hardest, heaviest oh, front kick right down the center to my groin. Of course, I'm wearing, I was wearing this at the time. Boom. <laughs> and she recoiled in pain like, ah, that hurt my foot. I'm like, good. Don't do that again. Jab means a punch. And she was absolutely shocked. This, if you wear it correctly, is more of a liability to the guy striking you in the groin than it is to you. Some of those old school UFC fighters back in the old days would take a, a cup like this and they would hammer or drill little spikes going backwards. So if people were kicking with their bare foot, yeah, that would be a, uh, a warning, if you will. Don't do that again. You know, there are some fantastic products out there. Um, some are higher end. The Thai Steel Cup, this is an oldie, but it's a goodie. I mean, this is the most bang for your buck you can, you can get, okay? This one I'm holding right here is steel. I got this one in China. It's a Wei Xing brand, if anyone is uh, wondering about that. Where's my, oh yeah, the one I stuck in the shorts is also a Wei Xing brand. 
Um, this one is steel, but it's it's coated in rubber. So I don't know if you can see that, but the ends are flexible. Okay. If you have something rigid like like this one, this is one of my oldest steel cups. This has seen an incredible lot of wear and tear, so all the leather is worn out. So um, the metal edge right there started rubbing against against me. I was like, ah, no, we don't want that anymore. But this one, instead of a metal edge, you know, it's rubber. So this is super comfortable and super protective. Okay. So yeah, that's the setup that I personally use. Because, um, man, even friendly sparring, you are going to get kicked in the groin. And if you spar as much as you need to to get any good at fighting, you're going to get kicked in the groin a lot. I mean, man, check out this sparring clip with my friend Maxime. I go for a kick, he throws a kick at the same time, it collides right in the middle of my legs, and we just keep sparring. Why? Because I had this on. And, yeah, that's about it, man. So make sure it's tied on securely, or use some really, really tight compression shorts. Get the ones with a, a pocket right there, and make sure it's pushed down all the way, okay? check positions meticulously man because if these things do shift i mean imagine you have that right we got a the red one so you can see it against the the blue background right and somebody kicks really hard and it comes in that way and it's not secured it's moving and everything under it is moving as well so the tighter the better can't stress that enough anyway thanks for the question good luck to you Enjoy sparring, spar safe, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.